What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in this video, I'm gonna talk you through five ways that you can create completely custom textures for use in your models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first off, if you're looking for a good website to just find textures, right? Not create custom ones from images or something like that. Um, a great website to go to is 3dassets.one. 3dassets.one allows you to search some of those popular texture websites, including Polyhaven, Ambient CG, and a lot more in order to find free textures to bring into your model. So finding a pre-made texture is always going to be easier than creating a custom texture, but in this video, we'll show you how to create those actual custom textures. Okay, and so the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is going to be to use something like Architectures. So Architectures is a free extension that you can download from the SketchUp extension warehouse. You can just for search for Architectures right here. You can download this and bring it in. And Architectures is going to give you the ability to actually use their material editor in order to create custom materials. So the way it works, so let's say we pop this up, open up Architectures by clicking on the little link right here. And note that Architectures has a great library of built-in textures, but we want to use the new texture function to create our own and upload a material. One thing to note is this does require an Architectures Pro account, which is $7.99 a month. This gets you access to a bunch of different things in here, right? Like high resolution downloads, uh, hatches, rows and columns, more patterns. So for me, it's been completely worth it. You also get access to bump and normal maps and roughness maps and other PBR options. For me, it's been 100% worth it. Okay. And so what I've got is I've got a wood texture that I want to upload and I want to create a flooring material out of it. And so remember that the way architectures works is it basically takes an image then it applies a pattern to that image in order to allow you to create different um, styles of materials. Well, in this case, what I want to do is I want to go to upload. I want to go pick my image. And so the way this works is actually really interesting because what you want to do is you want to take portions of this because it's going to take your different portions and apply them as textures to the actual flooring material itself, right? So see how I'm going through here and you can play around with different uh, materials in order to make this work. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to select a bunch of these, click on continue, and then we want to select that in our upload section right here. Well, notice what that does is that comes in here and that takes each one of them and it applies it to your object. Well, in this case, we'd probably want like a stretcher pattern right here, and they probably need to be longer. So we probably want the actual length of these to be more like 25 or 36 inches right here. We could make it a little bit smaller, maybe a 24 right here, but you can see what it's doing is it's coming in here and it's applying that material that you've selected for each one of these to the different pieces. And then you could go down to the joint options and um, there's a bunch of mortar options, but in this case, we want to take those joints and we want to say, no, we don't really want any joints. So I'm going to put it at zero right here. But now what we've got is we've got a material that we can apply to our surface right here. So you can see how I'm able to create a pretty seamless texture in here. Now, what I would want to do in this case is I want would want to take something um, that's got a little bit more variation in here so that I get a little bit more randomness. But this is really interesting for things like bricks. So say that I take a brick material and I upload it. So we're just going to go back. We're going to create a new texture. I'm going to go to this, upload the brick, and we're going to bring this in. And you can scroll up in order to view, but what you want to do is you want to select a bunch of the bricks like this. And the more bricks you can select, the more variation you're going to get. But this allows you to get the exact brick material off of a wall or something like that in order to create a material from it. So we're just going to click on continue right here. We're going to click on this. And so in this case, we want um, probably a stack or a stretcher pattern right here, but notice how each one of those images is going in here. And so it's just repeating them across this whole thing. Well, we could come down and select or adjust our mortar color. So maybe like a darker gray or something like that and click on okay. But you can also set those joints to a different pattern. Whoops, I don't wanna click on that. I want to click on, I wanna click on my edges. And in this case, I want like a rough brick. And then we can adjust the color of the mortar again, like this, but you can adjust things like the level 
of roughness by adjusting the perimeter scale right here. But then when you're done, you can import that brick and apply it to your surface like this. So this allows you to create these texture patterns really quickly directly inside of SketchUp. It's really good for quick materials. And so one other cool thing about architectures is you can also, if you go into your textures down here, you can just pick a material and then create your own material. So say you wanted a tile, for example, that was made of, or let's pick a stone. So we're going to pick a white marble right here. You can use this to create whatever kind of um, product that you want in here. So for example, let's say you wanted these edges to be fine edges right here. And you could add a darker mortar material like this. You could use it to create like a subway tile or something like that, right? You could do a stack in here and you can adjust all of these sizes like this. Maybe this is a lighter gray or something like that. But you can actually pick a material from their library as well and create your own materials using their library also. So I'm um, very powerful from that standpoint. I use this a lot. Okay, so next up is a tool that you can use if you want to create PBR materials from an image. It's also really good at taking a picture or an image that you take and making it seamless. So I pretty much always use this when I'm trying to manually make things seamless. Um, it's called Materialize from Bounding Box Software, and you can go download it for free and install it on your computer. And so once you do that, when you run this, it's going to pop up on your screen and you're going to have this little preview window. And so what you need to do is you need to start by uploading your texture image as a diffuse map. So you're just going to go to the O option. You're going to go find that image that you want to make seamless. So I'm going to click on select and bring that in. And so now what we have is we have the ability to adjust things. And for whatever reason, you need to create a height map before you can do the tiling, which is what we really want. So we're just going to click on create for a height map. It doesn't really matter, though you can you you can adjust things like the contrast in order to make the height map that it generates more pronounced. This isn't really a PBR materials tutorial, but now you can go to your tile maps. What your tile maps is going to do is it's going to, and let's adjust our tiling so we can see this right here. So what your tile maps is going to do is it's going to allow you to kind of blend the edges so that you don't get the nasty seams in here. And so the way this works is you can adjust this like this. Notice how you can adjust your overlap in a vertical and horizontal direction. I'm going to make this a little bigger just so you can kind of see what it's doing. So here's about where your seam is. So notice how if I adjust my Y overlap right here, what it's doing is it's adjusting the way that your brick material tiles. And you can adjust the edge fall off in here in order to make that effect more or less pronounced like this. But notice how now this no longer has seams. If I was to toggle my overlap Y back down, you can see those seams. But if I do this, it's going to do a really good job of creating a seamless texture. And you can click on set maps. When you're done with set maps, what you can do, and you could use this to generate your other maps in here as well if you're doing rendering, but I'm not really worried about that for right now. So I'm just going to go to save project. I'm going to save this as a JPEG and we'll call this seamless brick. And then we'll import that as a texture. But notice how now we basically were able to take an image of a brick texture and make a seamless material out of it. So materialize is great if you take a picture of something and you just want to make it seamless and then bring it into SketchUp without these nasty seams that kind of mess up your image. Okay, and so another tool I'll use, and this is more when I want more of a creative image, right? Not necessarily when I want to match something, but if I want to create a seamless texture and I just want it to be kind of creative, what I'll do is I'll use mid journey. And so mid journey is really good at creating seamless textures um, based on a prompt. Usually what I'll do is I'll use chat GPT in order to generate the prompt. So I'll tell it, can you give me a prompt for mid journey to create a seamless weathered brick 
texture. Bricks should be approximately seven inches long by two inches high and hit enter. What this will do is this will go through and it'll give you a mid journey prompt specifically designed to um, generate a weathered brick texture, right? So it gives you everything you need. It tells you that it needs to be tileable, PBR. Um, it tells you the aspect ratio, all that stuff. And you can just copy that over into mid journey right here. And I'm going to run this. So when we do that, what it's going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to generate four options. And so those four options, most of them will usually come in if you give it the instructions to make it tileable, right? And you give it the instructions that it's supposed to be like a top-down view. It does a pretty good job of generating textures. If you don't do that, then it's going to give you something that's in a little bit more of a perspective and it's not very good for a texture. But you can see how this is going through using our prompt and it's generating these brick materials right here. And so this is obviously very stylized. I did tell it to make a weathered brick material, but if I take this image and download it, right? So I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to apply it. And this one's probably got some weird shadows. So I would probably mess around with the lighting and shadows with some of these in order to see what we could generate. But if I bring that into SketchUp, so I'm just going to drag the image in. The cool thing about that is it will come in seamless and ready to apply. Right, so I'm going to take this whole thing, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to explode it. You want to make sure when you bring an image in this way that you go into your texture settings. So you just want to right click on this and uncheck the box for projected. But now if I double click in here like this, I can apply that brick material to the wall. And the cool thing about this is if you look at it, there's no seams on it. Like obviously you can see the texture image tiling. You can never get rid of that completely, but this is a completely seamless texture right here. And I could use it to generate whatever kind of images that I want. But what I found is if I give it an image reference, it doesn't always do the very best job in the world of generating an image. So um, that's something to kind of be aware of. So another option is say that you did go into GPT and you had a picture of something. Um, and I'm liking ChatGPT for a lot of its capabilities, but it doesn't generate a lot of images really quickly. But say I had a picture and I said, please generate a seamless texture to match this stone material in this image. And then I run it. ChatGPT can actually take that image, generate a seamless material based on an image that you give it. And it actually does a pretty decent job. Like it's not going to be a hundred percent a match, but it can get you something pretty close. The downside is it takes a little while to generate the image. And so it's a little weird in the sense that it kind of like split these images up right here, but overall it actually did a really good job of matching what the image was. You could play around with the prompt in order to try to remove these. But now if I download this and bring it over into SketchUp, so I'm just going to hop into SketchUp real quick. And so I'll just drag this in, do the same thing where I explode it. I want to make sure that I set it to not projected. But then if I sample it and apply it to this wall, like this is pretty seamless. I mean, you've got a seam right here that you could go in and fix and like materialize or something like that. But overall, this is a pretty good texture material based on a photo that I gave it. So I'm actually pretty happy with what this generated. You might want to fix a little bit of this, but overall, I think it did a really good job. So just like straight up in chat GPT, um, giving it an image and saying to generate a seamless texture, you might try that as well. And then one other tool that you might try that's currently free, I have no idea if it's going to stop being free in the future, is actually a tool made available by Polycam. So um, if you've used Polycam before, like I've done videos about Polycam using it to like scan spaces and things like that with your phone. But they also, if you go into their products, they have a texture generator. So this texture generator will actually take a texture, it will generate it based on an image if you upload an image, and it'll also generate PBR maps that go along with it, which uh, can be super valuable if you're doing any kind of rendering or anything like that. But what you can do is you can upload an image by clicking on the upload button, so in this case, I've got this kind of like green glass tile, right? You can put this image in here and you can adjust the strength of the image. So that's basically going to be how strongly it follows the image. I want this to be pretty high. I might put it at like 0.8 or something like that. Um, you can adjust the resolution that you bring in. And I'm just going to say generate a seamless glass tile material 
based on the image. And I'm going to run it, and it's going to give me four options. Those four options are going to get shown on this surface right here. Now, I wish there were other ways to preview this, right? I don't really like the like in and out, like bumpiness in here or anything like that. But this will actually go through, and it'll take this image, and it will try to generate a seamless texture. Um, and so you can kind of click through these different options. I think this last one is probably best. All of these have kind of a narrower band in there at one point, which I don't really know why it's doing that. So we might try running it with a much higher image strength and seeing what that does um, to see if it gets away from that image band. So image strength is always going to be really important. But what it should do is it should generate these textures. And when it does it, they should be seamless. And you can download them and bring them into your SketchUp model. So um, it's fairly limited in the sense that you don't have like a ton of options down here. You can adjust the number of images. But uh, beyond that, it's just kind of a run it, see what it generates. And then um, you can download it or just run it again. But um, for just like a quick texture image generation, I think it's pretty cool. And so you can see how this generated multiple different textures. Um, so I'm maybe going to pick this one right here, but I can click on the download button. It's going to download a zip file with all of those materials in it. And so if you look at this, it's got your albedo map. It's got your displacement. It's got your roughness. And it's got your normal in here. So, um, and this looks pretty good. I'm not a massive fan of the way that it's seamed right here in the middle, but we could probably clean that up in a Photoshop or something like that. But overall, um, it's seamless and it looks pretty good. So if we bring it into SketchUp, so I'm just going to double click in here. I'm just going to do a file import. We'll bring in the albedo map and we'll place it on the surface right here. And that's actually a pretty decent tile overall. Um, so I wish there was a little bit more uniformity in the tiles that it generated. So that's something that's not necessarily ideal, but as a quick texture generation tool, um, I could see you being able to use this uh, maybe a little bit faster, especially if you're doing rendering than the mid journey or the chat GPT method. So it's just another tool in your toolbox. It may work for you. Sometimes it may not, but overall um, being able to bring in this glass tile that looks like that image that I pulled out um, is pretty valuable to me. All right, so that's a few ways that you can create your own custom materials to use in your models. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any other methods that you use. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.